Welcome to the video series Unexplained Sightings in Puerto Rico For this video, I will talk about some of my own personal sightings as a Puerto Rico native Of course, by that I mean as a Puerto Rican, I have never lived elsewhere but in my own nation Here, I have spoken to thousands of people where I have heard many weird stories So apart from my own stories, I have also heard many weird and unexplainable things from friends from family and from people all over the island. That being said, this is just a video for entertainment purposes only and should only be viewed as such. Let's begin with a brief background that pertains to the story and then let's get right into the list. When I was a child, I wanted to be an astrophysicist and an astrobiologist. So for a great part of my life, I've watched the sky and the stars at night. I have a keen eye and I always look for things that will be unusual, things that wouldn't count as natural. Sometimes, many of us have seen unexplained things and share the same events. And most of the time, we just keep the weird phenomena to ourselves and go on with life like if it never happened. These stories surface from time to time in any given social situation. Number one. This was at the time of the curfew. I was driving into my dorm in San Dulce from Rio Grande through Route 66, and I only had 30 minutes to be home by 9. I'm driving pretty fast down the lane. It was very stressful, and you could also tell all the other drivers around me were also in the same obvious rush. I know they all wanted to reach their homes before the curfew in Puerto Rico. And like I said, we only had 30 minutes. So personally, I was extremely concentrated on driving. I wasn't thinking of anything else. Halfway down Route 66, that's where I saw it. An object that resembled a light was flying together with all the other speeding vehicles along the route. I was so confused as to why some weird light the size of a small plane would be flying so low along the mountainous region of the scenic route. I remember my eyes opened wide seeing this thing. I also tried to stop to see if I could film it somehow, but I couldn't. I couldn't film and drive at the same time. I was driving at 65 miles per hour. I'm sure this thing was even faster. It kept with all the cars. I remember this thing, whatever it was, also gave me the impression it was playful. But at one point, it went even faster, far in front of us. I started to scream because it also began to move up and down and in zigzags. I cannot stress enough the playful part and how it seemed it wanted to show off perhaps. Screaming was my reaction in acceptance that this wasn't normal. But that's not the weirdest part though. It disappeared by flying into a bigger stationary light just a bit higher and further from the original location all near the Route 66. Whatever the biggest light was, it definitely gave me mothership vibes. At this same time, I worked the night shift as security, and my co-workers would come to me to talk about these huge stationary lights that would hover in different parts of the Puerto Rican night sky. Number 2 I was working with a storm relief company after Huracan Maria. They had sent us to conduct traffic in the town of Florida up northwest Puerto Rico. When you enter these roads, you enter into a very rural community. At a point, all you see is plains and hills of green grasslands, ranches, and some forests. My friend and I conducted traffic with walkie-talkies for debris truck workers in a rock mountain covered curve on the road. The people really didn't care. They would run past our stop signs with their vehicles, which then almost resulted in them crashing into our trucks. But that's not the point. At a moment of low traffic, my friend calls me on the radio and says, bro, look at the sky, you have to see this. I answer confusedly. He tells me there is some sort of white discs floating around our location in some sort of line. When I look up, it seems to be true. It seems there were these small, maybe spherical objects that just kept organizing into a line 
below clouds not too high up. I was clear that I saw them. My friend was near a big antenna. And then he hits me up in the radio again saying that now these white spheres went down in a trio and began to circle the antenna spinning around it very fast. I run to see and when I get there they were already flying away. They stay up in the sky in weird square formations. We browse on the internet to compare released technological advancements to eight Hurricane Marias' aftermath. But nothing really came close to the things we saw. And that's not the weirdest part. Later that night, when we get home, we're just stepping out of the car, and at that same time, my friend jumps up in midair. I asked him why, and he tells me quite shook that a small light, like an orb, just flew past our heads. I was getting my things from the car, so I was looking down at the same moment and had missed it. My friend, however, he saw it perfectly again. I just thought of this, but it seems whatever those things were had to fly around 50 miles to go from where we were working to where we lived all the way on the other side of the island. Number 3 One night during Hurricane Marias' aftermath, I was looking at the stars. I did this so many nights, I really lost count. So that night, like always, I just pick up my chair and sit for hours looking at the sky. I point my chair onto a big constellation I could identify, perhaps made up of five to six stars that would sit just on top of El Junque National Rainforest. But this constellation had something funny to it. It gave me a weird feeling that I could really perceive its angle. The constellation would turn my head up in a weird way just so I could understand it, its angle. I didn't know why but this constellation was very big and visually different. The way I had to turn my head to look at the constellation made it feel closer than what it should have really felt. So I find myself staring at this constellation in particular for maybe an hour or two. Like I said, I was fixed into the seemingly weird angle. I stared into each star and I had a firm visual grasp of the full constellation. That's when it happened. That's when I saw it. One star from the bottom left of the constellation leaves its formation flying in a linear path with extreme speeds. I instantly jump out of my chair possibly flipping it along the way. Following this thing flying super fast across the sky trying to visually keep up with it. The hairs in the back of my neck stand up and my adrenaline sets in. I see whatever this ship, saucer, or spirit is, or whatever it was, flying so fast toward the horizon, up to the north of Puerto Rico towards the Atlantic Ocean, that I eventually couldn't see it anymore. At that point, I knew that constellation was no constellation. It was inside our own atmosphere, just below or around the range of low clouds. This was a formation of something that wasn't what I thought. I stare into the horizon in shock. Apart from maybe shouting a whoop once or twice, I was now silent, but totally concentrated. And as I'm staring at the horizon, this thing, like I said, whatever it was, flies again back toward my location. But now it had changed the angle of its trajectory. Now it flew again very quickly south, but maybe 30 degrees east from its original stationary location. It just flew past by me again very quick and then disappears into the horizon again. I don't know why, but it seemed to me it wanted me to see it for what it is. My intuition or instincts, or even my extra senses or whatever you want to call it, told me this thing knew I was watching it and it was watching me. I wasn't afraid. I kept watching the constellation thinking to myself, I know you're no stars, you're here in our atmosphere, hovering above us acting like star constellations, but you can't fool me. After 30 minutes of watching this constellation that was now missing a star, another star or whatever they are does the same exact thing. Breaking formation and seemingly traveling at supersonic speeds from a velocity and acceleration of zero and not even causing a sonic boom upon reaching said speeds. 
I see things like this all the time now. I'm pretty sure almost every time I fix my sight onto the Puerto Rican night sky, I'm going to see something that I can't truly explain. Things that are not natural. For more stories like this, please follow the series. Stay tuned for part 2 and all the other episodes. Links will be in the description down below. Like, share, and subscribe. This is Abaquetone Borique, and I'll see you on the next video. Oh, <laughs>